Alright, what's good, brother? What's happening, bro? How you doing? Good to see you again. Nice wise, nice right. Nice yeah. So, how'd you get the name Jungle Blow? The name Jungle Blow uh, it came about when I was in college. Uh, me and my friends we would, you know, do a lot of freestyling and just, you know, playing around. And uh, as a, as I grew in an in, in, uh, artist, I took it a step further and I kind of just look at myself as the wind, you know, and I kind of just breeze through nature, you know, breeze through life here to, to bring something cool to the world, you know, kind of, kind of corny, but, nah. you know, <laughs> I, I like it, yeah. you know, something I like, yeah. So, where did you go to school? I went to Georgia Southern University. Okay, what was your study? I actually studied theater uh -huh. down there, so, I'm actually a, a, a thespian by trade, I'm an actor. Really? Uh, yes, and all, all of the art, the, this work that you see here is, it's all self-taught, um, but it all started at Georgia Southern University, and um, I, what I had, well, why I started painting was I, I had a problem with, with finishing work, you know, um, especially a lot of personal things, like little projects I would start, and I always knew I was an artist, but at this particular time I wasn't doing any art, you know, no drawings, no nothing, so... I would always go to the university bookstore and they always had these canvases stacked up. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, one day I'm gonna go buy one of those canvases, right? So, I went to the bookstore one day and I just, just so happened to get that refund check. Y'all know how that go. <laughs> got that refund check. And I said, I'm gonna go ahead and give me a canvas today, right? At least you invested. You know, yeah. you know, and, um, <laughs> and I took it home and I just, be, I started, you know? And uh, when I finished, the piece, I had no idea what I was gonna paint first. Mm -hmm. But when I finished, you know, uh, a lot of my friends really, really appreciated it. And it, it kind of sparked a, 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 a feeling when I was a kid, because that's when I, when I started drawing, I did it to make people happy, you know, and that, that motivated me to keep doing it. And uh, after I finished that first canvas, I knew I had something, you know, I knew that something was happening. I knew that it was, it was gonna start something good, mm -hmm. Uh, but I didn't know where it was going to go. But it started off as a practice to exercise out of weakness, right? So I saw that I had a weakness of not being able to finish things. Mm. So in my attempt to better myself or to grow from this position, I became this. And it all came from me stepping outside of my comfort zone. And um, that's kind of what I wanted to try to tell other artists and just people, period. You know, whatever you do, get out your comfort zone because that's where you'll find your true purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has different flaws, but those will, those are what make us unique. Yeah. And once we figure out what those flaws are and we practice exercising them out, that's where we find our purpose. Dig that, dig that. So, so how long ago was that? When you started um, painting? I started painting when I was like 20 or 21, young, yeah. you know. Um, I'm, I'm only 28 now, not that I'm too far from it. I've only been painting for seven years, but it's, it's just all been me trying to better myself and always, you know, trying to, you know, make people happy along the way. And as I've grown in it, it's become more of a, a, a exercise to channel out my, my experience or my life, you know, or to express myself in a way, you know, where I couldn't necessarily I couldn't necessarily do with words, you know. Um, I feel that painting um, is a lost a lost art, and I feel like it's also a lost language. I feel like as you know, as black people, um, I don't like to say black. I like to more so refer to us as indigenous, you know, and um, how we communicated uh, once upon a time was through art. You know, that was a very very key part in how to uh, document uh, things that were going on yeah. and um, what I want to do is to try to reawake you know the minds of artists and, and understanding really what they're doing you know it's really it's really something very powerful it's a language it's a lost language I feel and I feel like if you if you truly channel your work properly you can, you can be able to put forth some really great work Big that. So that, that brings to my next question. So, like, where, where do you get most of your like inspiration from? Where do you where you my inspiration from? It comes from me being 
in America, I guess. Just being a quote unquote black person, like I say, I don't look at myself as a black person or an African. I'm an indigenous person. My skin tells me that I'm native to the land that I'm standing on. You know, I feel uh, that um, based off the language that we we're using uh, and words like black and words like Africa, they isolate us as indigenous people to just one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when in fact we are we're from all over. You know what I'm saying? Every every the land that we're standing on is ours. You know, that's that's basically how I see it. And I try to translate what I find to be truth into my work. Okay. You know, um, I try to I try to express that. You know, sometimes it's hard to to say things. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people's minds can't necessarily wrap around what you're saying. Yeah. But like I say, that art is a lost language. I feel that it can touch people in places where words and hands can't reach. You know, so hopefully, in my attempt to paint the truth, mm -hmm. hopefully it can resonate into the mind of somebody, you know, of what the truth is, at least for me, you know, everybody can create their own tr own reality, but, yeah. you know, I, I, I think, um, I think our experiences help us to, to gain what truth is, and my experiences are, are my work. So, I mean, how, how did you, you know, evolve to that perspective? It took time, yeah. like, I'm, I'm, uh, all of my work, it's all, it's not like I sit there and I say, you know what, this is what it's gonna be. Yeah. It's something that, first of course, it starts off in a shape. You know, I have a figure in my mind or, and I try to exercise that out. But when it comes to adding the color, in adding the color, a lot of times the concepts grow and it's more of a collage type of thing. You know, I, I, I allow my life to work and I, I allow experience to happen and I allow my mind to just collage pieces of things that I see along the way. And when it's time, then that, that, that piece of work can even begin because, you know, it's, it's a slow burn. And, and, and I, don't, I don't paint things right away. It's, I don't, I'm not gonna finish it in a week. I'm not gonna finish it, maybe not even in a month. You know, I really believe in taking my time just so that I can thoroughly understand what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So when, I'm, when it's presented to the viewer, you know, they feel exactly where I was coming from, you know. I, I, I look at them, I look at my artwork like my children, right? Like I literally, they start in my mind, you know, I, I cultivate it and I, you know, I carry it for so many months, right? And then when it's ready, I literally birth, birth it out of my hands, you know, onto canvas. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really close to my work. I love my work. Uh, and uh, that's why I set the, the value in it so high. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Dig that. So like, when, when did you start really taking it serious? When did you know that like you can, you know, you might be able to make a living off of this or be able to be a professional artist? Well, or would you consider yourself <coughs> a professional? Artist? I do consider myself a professional artist. I consider uh, myself a successful artist, and it's not based off of the finances. It's based off of the the amount of work I have, yeah, and the the detail and the and the the passion that I put into it. I don't, I don't necessarily allow somebody to validate what success is to me yeah you know finances yes that that does definitely give you a a nice firm understanding of oh that person's successful but mm -hmm. you know in my mind I'm, I'm very content you yeah. know just because i've been able to exercise this out of my mind you know exercise this out of my body you know and it's very hard for people to be able to express themselves one to to be able to express themselves in art form mm -hmm. so um you know uh <clears throat> so yeah, I, I definitely feel successful. Um, and uh, where did I answer answer your question? You did, you did. I you did. did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I did it. Okay, if you say I did. No, you good. You good. You right. it. So I mean, how do you explain like the the business of art? Like how how do you make a living off art nowadays? And how, how does that whole thing work? Well, what I do, I try to just be seen. Yeah. You know, try to, like I say, everything has been a slow burn. It, it took a lot of time just for me to collect this work. And as of, as of maybe just a few months ago, I've been really comfortable with presenting myself to the world. So I can't say right now I'm making a living off of it, you yeah. know. Um, but I'm doing my best as a, as a single person to, to be seen mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to 
get my work out there to the people and uh, get my message about art out to the people. Mm. Um, so it's it's everything is coming. You know, everything is coming. Just like my work, life and success, it can be a slow burn. You know, nothing, nothing is a is a sprint. You know, it's a, a slow race. You know, you gotta take your time. So, I'm taking my time, and uh, you know, everything, everything's, everything's on its way. So, what, what's some things like? Where has your art been? You know, thus far since you started. You know, have you sold any pieces? Are you in any any museums? Or anything like that? Yes, um, Wiregrass Museum. Uh, fantastic museum, um, really, really, really great uh, platform for artists to present their work. Uh, I have I have some there. It's actually there now. Uh, hopefully, it'll be coming back to me soon, mm -hmm. which it will be. The show's coming to an end. Um, I've done a few shows here in Atlanta. You know, just a couple select areas. Some, a lot of underground uh, art shows. Yeah. You know, places that a lot of people just you know just. They, if you don't know, you wouldn't know type of places. Um, but like I said, things are things are fresh, very fresh. This is this is maybe this is the raw uh, the raw stage of my career, mm -hmm. and um, you're actually catching some great footage. Like, this is like the, the, the real, the true beginning of a, of, a, of the exposure of a genius. Dig that. Yeah. Dig that. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. If you don't believe in your work. Who else is going to do it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, let's get into as far as like some some of your favorite pieces that you've got. You know what I mean? Can you talk about your favorite piece right now or if you have a favorite or what's, you know, I, 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 mm, I don't I don't have any favorite pieces. That's like saying I have a, a favorite child, you yeah. know? Like, they all, they all come to the planet when they're supposed to and I, I love them all the same. Um, <laughs> but... We can talk about. Do you maybe want to talk about a piece? Um, anyone that you want to talk about? We can maybe just pick one. I don't know. Uh, Let's talk about this one right here. You got the. <coughs> okay. Do you, the, this one is called uh, Colonization Spell. Uh. All right. So how I see it is. The last stage of truly colonizing an individual is to reformat the way they think. Yeah. And to do that is to change their language. Mm -hmm. Because with language comes a cultural history, you know, that stretches back possibly thousands of years, just in a language alone. Yeah. So what you see here is a guy, a male. And he is latched to a book called the English Dictionary. And on his latch, it says nigga, and he is standing on the word black, mm. right? So this is the condition of an indigenous individual under the colonization of another people. So he, he's, he's tied to a language. Yeah. So he's standing on the word black, and he's latched to the word nigger. Now these words, they all, they belong in the English dictionary, but these words were never his. Yeah. He defines himself along the, the words of someone who never saw him as an equal. Mm -hmm. So he's comparing himself to a vibration of somebody that always saw him as an enemy. Yeah. Um, so his rationale is only limited to what his enslaver or enemy has given him. So the words that, you know, like black and, and nigga and, you know, these, 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 these words never define, define the individual. Which he's more, which he's, what he's doing is he's stepping, one leg is on black, one leg is last to the n-word, but he's awake. He sees, he's stepping off of that book and he's stepping into the universe, right? And this is connecting him back to home, connecting him back to the ancestors, connecting him back to uh, the actual creator, uh -huh. you know, how I see it. Because um, the universe is whatever you put out there, right, is what you get back, right? Whatever you, 
that's how I see it. I see the universe as as as, as um, it, it's a lot deeper. I don't know, I'm trying to I'm trying to, I don't want to go too deep. I kind of just want to just kind of scratch the surface. Um, it, it, nonetheless, though, I mean, this is this, it's an amazing piece right there. I mean, thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you. This is, this is good work. And I, I definitely took my time with it. Yeah. Right. I really wanted the viewer to kind of see. Like I say, all my work is a reflection of me. It's a reflection of the, the you know, my experience on this planet. I say that Windows, that's my experience. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of how I feel where I am, right? I don't necessarily, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know multiple languages, but I'm very much aware of what, of, of, uh, of, my, of the condition, you know, of, the, of our people. You know, and every other, other country, the poorest of the poor, right? Mm -hmm. They they know more than one language. Yeah. But over here in this country, collectively, it's normal to only know one language. Yeah. You know, so that means that you can only express and rationalize reality under this language, which yeah. limits you so much. You know, you, you really can't see the. You're limited. It's almost like you you only see one color, or you only you only you know taste one food. You know, you're not really exposed to the full palette of the planet. You know, and, and uh, so you can't really mingle. You can't really connect. You can't really pass, you know, thoughts and things like that. It, it really isolates you. Yeah, it you know. Sense, yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, uh, this is a con a person stepping into consciousness. That's what's happening here. A yeah. person, a person who's in the in, in who's within the bounds of a of a, a colonized condition, and, uh, but he's aware of his condition and he's, he's stepping off of it. Dig that, dig that. So I mean, I you know I hear you getting into consciousness and all that. You know, do you study anything in particular, or where where you at? You know, spiritually. And uh, I'm not really. I can't say that I'm. I'm studying anything. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm like a religious person. Uh -huh. Of course, that's where it all began. Yeah. You know the. Even the things that I'm, I began to talk about, they were all provoked mm -hmm. from a religious perspective. You yeah. Because that's where, you know, the concept of God or mm -hmm. higher power, you know, that's where it came from. That's where I began to, to at least start to think. Um, but no, I'm not studying anything. Um, I, sh I, I should be, right? I, no, I mean, be. we, you know, we reincarnate, we ancestors. You're right, you're so right. We've been exposed to things mm -hmm. along the way, so we come in here and we start recalling memory and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's you start how I feel. Like how I feel is like, like it's the memory. It's like genetic, right? Yeah. Like I feel like really, I feel like I've been here before to an extent. Um, and, I, and all I'm doing is is basically bringing what I once had back. Yeah. You know, type of thing. Uh, you know, some people. What? What? How? That don't even make sense. Um, but it's just a feeling, you know. If you know it, you know it. If you don't, you don't. You know, if you don't feel that way, you, you just you may be a fresh soul. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's old souls here, and there's there's new souls. You know. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I ain't gonna hold you too long. But what, mm -hmm. what's some advice you give to a you know up and coming black artist that wants to get into the art game and you know, put their work out and stuff like that. What I would say is to all the young artists, believe in your work. Yeah. It don't matter where you are in in your work. If you are passionate about it, go for it. Yeah. You know, don't fake the funk. If you're an artist, say it every day. Believe that you're an artist. You know, don't don't make it just a hobby. You know, if you if you believe that you're an artist live their life, you know, um, and keep your head up, because it's tough, it's tough to take on that, that person, and say that you're an artist, and truly live it, yeah. you know, you have to believe it, you know, it's, it's, you have to have that faith of a mustard seed, like, for real, because if you don't, you know, you, you'll just get the next job that pops up, you know, that's taking up all your time, Yeah. you know, um, just to pay bills. Jungle Blow. It was a pleasure, man. All right, brother. Thank, Thank you, brother. Yes. Be good.